All right, so here is me being angry at Trump, which is very common. Um, you know, he was at a press conference talking about the response to Corona, and he was saying, you know, the people at the CDC are amazed at how, you know, they're, they're even like how I know so much. And what they don't know is that I had a super genius uncle who was an MIT professor. And he always brags about how he uh, graduated from Wharton. And, you know, I don't really um, think that your college should uh, be the first thing people care about. But since he keeps bringing it up, let's be clear. He was a Fordham University student who transferred after two years at Fordham into Wharton. And he graduated with no honors. So um, he's not exactly a Rhodes Scholar. Uh, whereas you've got people literally like Mayor Pete who were Rhodes Scholars or Cory Booker was a Rhodes Scholar or Andrew Yang who went to Brown and has a law degree from Columbia. But at any rate, so it just gets under my nerves when, when Trump says he's such a genius and like he gives advice to the CDC because his uncle taught at MIT, like what the uh then there was me saying hey you know i've been seeing these clips of biden misspeaking um and i'm worried that this is uh he's not gonna last that it's only march um but then i think watching that missouri i think i was influenced by some of those like really manipulated uh videos that are cut to make them look bad Ooh, speaking of corona if you guys are not familiar with this amazing dashboard. Um, let me just share it with you. Hold on. Mm, it's so cool. It's from Johns Hopkins. And it gives you like all the latest data. So here you can see there are 109,000 confirmed cases, mostly in China. But look at that. Italy, South Korea. Iran, France, and Germany, all over a thousand cases. And given that most people don't get tested, this is probably undercounting. Um, you know, the US it says it only has 484, but I don't think most people are getting tested. I think you have to you have to get a doctor to request a test, and there's a difficulty with availability of test kits, but What's useful about this is uh, the order of magnitude and maybe the ranking. And what you can see is that, wow, this is no longer, you know, just a mainland China only thing. So if we look at the map here, um, whoops, this is the one I wanted. That didn't work. Hold on. I wanted to make this thing a little bigger. No, that's kind of lame. All right, well, you'll just have to, <laughs> let's go back to this view. What you can see is that, yes, there's a whole lot of corona in China, but you also see like we are in a global world. You've got it in Australia. You have it all up in the Middle East. What was that, Iran? Yeah. You have Europe just everywhere in Europe. And then the U.S. Um, I mean, there ain't a safe place to, to be in terms of uh, maybe parts of Africa. But that's probably just a matter of time before uh, it reaches Africa. So, yeah, you could, you could go up into some colder climate. <laughs> but, uh, you know. This thing's uh, this cat's out of the bag. This this horse has left the stable. You have four thousand deaths or three thousand eight hundred. A lot of recoveries. So this is an interesting chart here. Uh, this one shows you the number of people in mainland China that have it, and that has plateaued. You're always suspicious. These are self-reported numbers by the the country. So you know maybe it's in China's interest to report um, that they have it under control. They appear to have it under control based on these numbers. Um, the green is the total recovered. 
So it shows that lots of people who have gotten it uh, recover and are fine. And then the yellow is uh, non-China locations. And that the slope of that line does not appear to be flattening. So you could reach a point where there's probably more or as many people that have it in China as they do uh, in the rest of the world. So um, that's my uh, that's my COVID. Um, oh, I'll give you guys the URL so you guys could can can find this. Um, I'm gonna paste it here. I wonder if it'll let me. Yeah, hopefully that'll work for you guys. And then I'll also retweet. Um, retweet it right now on my Twitter feed so you can see it. Okay, so now let's go back to more Twitter commentary uh, here. Oh, this is another cool thing, uh, again, about, about uh, Corona. Have you guys seen this Vox video that talks about uh, why diseases keep appearing in China? If you haven't, uh, again, go to my Twitter feed and you'll you'll find it. Uh, they are they are presenting an argument that many of these viruses come from animals, and often that uh, they come from like kind of exotic wild animals, um, and that in China, many of these animals are either caught from the wild where they have the virus, or they're actually bred in these very congested sort of agro farming kind of like uh, very un, un, unpleasant conditions for the animals. And it's probably not unique to China. I'm, I'm guessing there's probably other places that, you know, stick like a bunch of chickens and tiny little, um, you know, indoor thing and they never see the light of day or whatever. But at any rate, you've got all these kind of unusual animals, sometimes wild, sometimes wild, but then bred in these confined areas. And then they're sold at these wet markets where the animals are in these cages and they're stacked. And there's all this like liquid, like urine and pus and blood and stuff it drips all over. And people are buying chickens and they're buying, you know, uh, bats and, you know, goat and lamb and pig and whatever, you know, swine and all this stuff. And uh, that th these markets uh, and the, the sort of supply chain that um, is a, that, that's, that's preceding these wet markets are contributing to the spread of all these crazy viruses. So if that's true, I mean, first of all, you should check out that video. I thought it was a good, it was a good video to watch. Um, let me give you guys a link to it here before I forget. Um, copy link. So you can you can check that out. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's that was interesting. And if that's true, I think we need to research this. But if it's true, then now here is a case where I think it would be a wonderful opportunity for President Trump to call BS on China and say, look, uh, if you want to be part of the international community, you need to raise your standards on uh, livestock, uh, hygiene, um, farming of animals, uh, the butchering process, the uh, distribution uh, conditions, the... Um, the hygiene of the places where people are buying this stuff. Like, you know, this is basically like America a hundred years ago, probably where like, you know, we had some crazy, probably livestock stuff. And I guess in some cases, like even today in America, like if you see some of the big chicken production areas, those chickens are like kind of strange and not super natural. Um, but um and this is why uh, I guess you also have the case where we have our issues with romaine lettuce and E. coli and all this stuff. But 
I would just say, look, China, if you have these crazy <laughs> wet markets with these crazy animals and you have these crazy farms where you're breeding these things and they're all producing these crazy viruses, like that's not just your problem anymore. That affects everybody. And if you want to be part of the international community, you need to raise your game there. So anyway, um, that was that. Uh, then I said, hey, you know, it's just interesting how people hate. A lot of people are like, oh, fake, fake news. And I don't believe in climate change and scientists and all this stuff. But, you know, when your life's on the line, you know, if you if you have this massive, um, you know, potential pandemic, what you want is you want someone who believes in science, who's a trained scientist has ideally advanced degrees in public health and um, infectious diseases, that kind of stuff, like really leading the charge. Um, you know, not Mike Pence, frankly, and not Donald Trump. And I get that Donald Trump's uncle once taught at MIT. I, I, it's very impressive, but that doesn't mean that I want to get my medical advice from him. 